Okay, so this is another one of the extended response questions. And you've got a party planner, and like all good party planners, they've decided to have this structure diagram that is going to help them plan how much they charge people for a party. It says that this is a structure diagram, so it's giving you that away. And the first part of the question is, state another design technique. So the three design techniques we have are structure diagrams, pseudocode, and flowcharts. So I'll say pseudocode, but you could also say it's a flowchart, is the other one. Right, the type of loop. So we want to look for where there is a loop in this. Now, this is an if statement, this is an if statement, but this symbol here, that's for a loop. So we're looping for each child in the list. It's a bit like what we did in question nine, where we looped through each day. There's going to be a set number of children because we've already got the number of children in this step. So it's not a conditional loop. It's not looping until there are no more children. Say there's 10 children, then this is going to loop 10 times. So it must be a fixed loop. Now we've got design tested with the following input. So there's 12 adults, 16 children, and there is a cake required. And we have to work out, first of all, just the venue cost. So it's not the total cost, it's the venue cost, which is this bit here. So if we've got 12 adults, so we've got 12 adults, we've got 16 children. Is the number of adults plus the number of children greater than 20? Well, that's 28. So 28 is greater than 20, yes. So the venue cost is zero. So it's going to go to this branch here. So the venue cost is zero. State the total cost of the party. So we already know that the venue cost is zero. Um, what we've got here for the total cost is the child buffet times the number of children plus cake plus the venue. So we better work out the cake. So let's go back. A child buffet is two pounds. Is a cake required? So yes, it says here that cake is required. So we're going to have 15. And then we've got our number of adults and our number of children. So we don't really need the number of adults for this, just the number of children. So the child buffet is the two pounds for 16 children. It's going to be 32 for that. And there's going to be zero venue cost. So all in, if you add that up, you get £47. So the total cost is 47 There's a design question here. So unlike the, the previous ones that had code, you could answer this technically using any design technique. But personally, I would always have advised my classes to use pseudocode because I think it's where they're more likely to pick up marks. Now, you see this is a four mark question, so it's not like the three mark design one that we did have earlier on the paper. It says that a personalised sweatshirt costs £12, and then each character in the message is an additional 25 pence. Now, they're mixing up pounds and pence here, so it would be useful to think of the 25 pence as 0 0.25. Using a design technique, design a programme that will store the user's message and output the total cost of the sweatshirt. So... First of all, we need to get the message. You notice we're not being asked to refine a particular step. Earlier, we only had to do the last bit of the program, but we don't already have a design or a bit of code here that's getting the message. So first of all, let's get the message that's going to be on the shirt. Then we're working out the cost. Now, the base cost here is £12. So if I said something like uh, set cost to 12 pounds and then let's kind of break it down a little bit if I after that decided that I wanted to get the number of letters so the number of letters times 0 0.25 and I'm going to add that to the cost we'll do set the letter cost to the length or len, whatever your function is. So this is all about using a predefined function. Length of the message. Times 0 0.25. And then set the cost to cost 
plus letter cost. I could also there just have said, you know, I could have skipped line two and I could have said to 12 plus the letter cost. Um, and then lastly it says, and output the total cost. So, display the cost. So I've broken that down into a bit more detail than I needed to there. Um, that depends on how you're doing it in your head. It says that the washing machine label on the sweatshirt has the following symbol. We have to identify an object used to make it and one of its attributes. So it's stored as a vector graphic. It doesn't use the word vector here, but it's a vector graphic. So objects, we've got the rectangle. because so Around the outside, we've got a rectangle. We've got the ellipse there. We've got the smaller ellipse. In the centre, you could divide it up. You could say that that was a line and that there was four separate lines there. So any of those would do. I'm just going to say rectangle. And then one of its attributes, so an attribute of that rectangle. It could be the x and y coordinates, it could be the fill colour, the line eh, thickness or the line colour. So I'm just going to say x and y coordinates. And then once this program is implemented, so once it's turned into code, we'll see which part of the processor would execute the following tasks. Now parts of the processor, we've got the ALU, we've got the control unit, and we've got registers. So the one that's going to calculate something will be the ALU, because that's the arithmetic logic unit. Transferring it uh, from memory. Now, this is maybe a trickier question than it looks. It's not the data bus, which is what you would be used to things being transferred on. It's the control unit because it's part of the processor that's doing it. It's not asking you uh, what part of the computer system would transfer something between memory and the processor. Uh, that would probably be a data bus, but here we're talking about which part of the processor is uh, executing that task. 